This is a, the last bastion of liberty that there really is. This is Alaska. A lot of the time, it gets left out of the national political conversation, but it has some of the most interesting politics of any place in the country. We don't want the government controlling a lot of our lives. We like our guns, but we also like our bodily autonomy. We're seemingly in another country. You know, we, we speak your language and we use your currency, but there's still a lot of ideals that are separate. Alaska has voted Republican in every presidential election except one since it became a state. But it doesn't really fit the picture of a reliably red state. Abortion is protected in the state constitution. Weed has been legal for a decade. And every year, Alaskans get paid a dividend from the state's oil revenue fund, a program that looks kind of socialist to outsiders. And in this election, Alaskans look like they'll pass one of the most progressive and pro-worker ballot measures in the country. When we only look at politics in terms of red versus blue, there's a lot that gets missed, like what people are actually looking for from their government. So while everyone else is focused on a handful of swing states, I'm taking you to Alaska, a state that seems like it doesn't matter in the presidential election, but can tell us so much about politics. I'm hoping that we get a change in administration the stuff that Trump was doing from 2016 to 2019 was obviously working really well. And I'm hoping he gets in again and does the exact same thing again. Did you vote for Trump in 2016? No, I didn't like him. Really? Yeah, but I didn't really know him. I, I only knew him from the show, The Apprentice, and I never watched it. I, I remember him showing videos of him saying, you're fired. And it looked to me like he kind of enjoys that. Mm -hmm. and I would not. This is Warren Foster. He lives in Wasilla, also known as Sarah Palin's hometown, but he invited us up to a cabin at an undisclosed location in Sutton under the condition that we couldn't tell anyone how to get there, which is how I found myself here. So you're gonna take three, three liberals, maybe socialists, <laughs> out to the woods. And I'm bringing a gun. And you're bringing a gun. Good, good setup so far. <laughs> Warren is what I would consider to be an archetypical Alaska Republican. He likes his gun semi-automatic and his government small. The more government interference, the worse off we are. How dare people in Los Angeles and New York tell us what to do up here and say we can't have guns. My life is in danger walking through these woods if I don't have a gun. Warren moved up here back in the 80s to work as a union air traffic controller. I didn't feel like we were given full value for the amount of work that we were doing. So when we got a union that said, hey, we're going to try and get you guys fair wages, yeah, we'll for it. The first thing to know about Alaska is that it's a big labor state. It has some of the highest union density in the country. Most states with a big union presence lean Democrat, but that's not necessarily what Alaskans are looking for, at least not in the presidential election. And Alaska has, is getting butchered by the Biden administration. They're killing one thing after another. They've really put this state it's a resource state, and they're not letting the state develop the resources. Back in the 1970s, oil brought nearly 30,000 jobs to the state. They call it the biggest single construction project since the Egyptians built the pyramid. These were union jobs. Out on the oil rigs, the drillers are teamsters. The roughnecks are teamsters. The surveyors are teamsters. The teamsters basically ran the state, and this benefited workers across Alaska. Hey there, Hi. how's it going? I grew up with an immigrant mother and a blue collar worker father. My dad was a teamster. And so growing up, I knew that although we weren't um, wealthy by any means and didn't live a fancy in a fancy home, I knew I was fortunate because I could go to the doctor or the dentist and we took a family vacation every few years. <laughs> But decades of right-wing attacks nationwide stripped unions of their power, even in Alaska. Now, Alaska's union membership is half of what it used to be, and many workers are struggling. Teresa Rayner started working as a flight attendant, a union job, 17 years ago. But it was only about two years ago that I got involved with helping other flight attendants hmm. who were struggling. What happens is they will come in well-prepared, very positive, very excited for the future with money saved, um, maybe even 15 or 20,000 if they're lucky. And within a year, that's easily depleted because of the cost of living in Alaska. 
how does that strike you that you you're working with these people they're fully employed and they're still having to rely on food stamps having to rely on um like the goodwill of others how does that what do you think of that if you're going to come to work and work mm -hmm. hard every day you should make a, a living wage and um i don't think that's unreasonable i don't think that it's unfair and and um, I could sit and argue all day long with anyone who, who disagrees with me on that. Alaska had the highest minimum wage in the nation until the mid-1980s. Now, Alaska's minimum wage ranks 29th, but it's still one of the most expensive places to live in the country. The state imports 95% of its food, and many places are not accessible by road, making basic goods and services even more expensive. Housing prices have shot up too, and it's hitting locals in resort towns the hardest. We're here in Girdwood where the housing prices are astronomical, and it means that a lot of the people who work here can't actually afford to live here. A basic one bedroom is probably 2,000 a month. That's crazy. If not more. Yeah. Um, and that may be, you know, that's running water. Mm -hmm. um, dry, dry cabins or anywhere from 1200 to 1600 1700 a month to rent. Adolf Garcia is a butcher at the Double Muskie, a high-end restaurant in town. Once a hippie enclave, Girdwood is now mostly a tourist town, taken over by expensive vacation homes. I live right back there in that year. You have all these people that have weekend, you know, once a year houses here that sit empty or they, you know, they're here once a month. People that have way too much money in this town. Who people blame for the high cost of living and how they think it should be solved is playing a major role in how Alaskans are thinking about the election. I used to be a little bit left-leaning individual mm -hmm. until I started looking at what this system in modern times actually represented, mm -hmm. okay? Versus what it used to represent 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they, indeed, they were for the middle man, the, the little man, okay? The Democratic Party was, but it is not the same party that my granny was so devout to. This is Mark Richard. I met him at Fred Meyer, started talking politics, and next thing you know, I was in his van, headed to his house. He's a retired helicopter mechanic and a gold miner who gives away any gold he finds. Mark is planning on voting for Trump, but... And more than anything, I'm an independent. Okay, I'm gonna vote for whoever does the right thing. Okay, not just say it, but do it. I'm not gonna just run down one party line because these guys say, you're a Republican, you need to vote. Oh, uh, no, I don't think so. I will vote according to the dictates of my conscience and the research that I've done on these individuals. A lot of things about Mark are unique, but this isn't. Even though Alaska has gone Republican in every presidential election but one, 60% of Alaskans don't consider themselves a Democrat or Republican. And Alaskans aren't alone. A growing share of Americans don't like either party. So if most Alaskans aren't necessarily buying what either party is selling, what do they actually want? I'm um, the big wigs up there on top of the ivory hotel, smoking their big cigars and all that other stuff, like the story's always been. If it wasn't for the little people at the bottom, they wouldn't have no cigars. And, no, and nobody would have never built their, their ivory palace. In my opinion, even more should be done for people on the bottom than is being done nowadays or ever has been done, really. I mean, because it's the folks on the bottom that actually build these things mm -hmm. for these other people. And they should perhaps show just a little bit of appreciation for what they're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a measure that's on the ballot this year that would raise the minimum wage from $11.73 to $15 an hour in Alaska. It would let uh, workers accrue paid sick leave, so it would um, make that em employers have to provide paid sick days to their right. employees. And then it also makes it so employers can't force their employees into political or religious meetings. Um, first impressions, what do you think about that? Actually, they need to raise the minimum wage. Okay, and there's too many people out here in society in Alaska and in the world in the United States, whatever, that cannot make ends meet. I mean, people gonna get sick, they're gonna get sick, okay? And they have to be the boss, they have to pay for it, then pay for it. Unless we're making money for it, right? All right? He can, he can 
Not by swimming golf balls, <laughs> or whatever case may be. All right. Ballot Measure 1 is a historic, three-pronged, pro-worker ballot measure. These types of policies are often thought of as progressive. But here, they're resonating with voters across the political spectrum. Alaska is almost certainly going to vote for Trump, right? It's a safe red state, but you also have this ballot measure that's really, I mean, on paper, it's really progressive. It's really pro-worker and it's polling at like 64% support. Why do you think that is? Because Alaskans are independent minded. That's why we, we um, I don't know, we're bipolar. I don't know. <laughs> um, because we care about issues. Erin Jackson Hill is an unabashed progressive and lifelong Alaskan. I mean, it's like marijuana. Marijuana was quasi-legal up here for years, years, because Alaskans are like, we're gonna smoke our weed. <laughs> we're gonna smoke our weed, mm -hmm. blah. And so when, the, when it came up as a ballot measure, I knew it was gonna pass because Alaskans are like, yeah, you're not coming into my house and telling me what to do. Even small government Republicans like Warren found something to like about it. So there's a measure on the ballot this November, uh, ballot measure one, mm -hmm. which would raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour by 2027. It would let people accrue paid sick leave, and it would also prevent your boss from retaliating against you for opting out of a political or religious meeting that has nothing to do with your job. I actually didn't know about that third one. I knew about the first two. The third one, I'm highly in favor of that. I don't think that people should be forced to participate in a political or religious thing for their employment. That's absurd. That third thing in that mm -hmm. ballot measure almost might make me vote for it. I'll make up my mind on election day. We're often fed a narrative that raising the minimum wage and guaranteeing paid sick days will negatively impact small business owners. But John O'Leary, who owns my favorite coffee shop in Girdwood, said that's not necessarily the case. I don't care if they raise the wages at all. I really don't. Especially if I know that we're all in the same boat. We all have to raise. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. I mean, especially in a town like this, because it is so expensive to live. And like, yeah, they, like, well, anywhere, anywhere, because it's just uh, most working class. I don't think they make enough. Everyone in my family is a Republican, <laughs> except really? for me. And they do very strongly believe in their freedom and their independence and their privacy. But one of the fundamental ways that a person is free is that they can make a living. And I think that there's not a single person that that doesn't resonate with, that no one's free when they live in poverty. No one's free when they have to come to work sick. And no one's free when their employer tells them what they have to sit and listen to. So when someone says uh, that they're about freedom and independence and they don't want people telling them what to do, this ballot measure is all of that. It's all three of those things. It's the reason why we have a Republican bent to Alaska, I thought about this, is the oil industry, right? It's, it's the money. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why we have a conservative bent is because people are trying to hold on to what they have. And that the oil industry has a lot of sway up here. We're not as red as people think we are. Yes, people will vote for Trump. I still don't understand it, but they will. But when you get down to issues of personal rights and workers' rights and individual rights, Alaskans are very progressive. We do not like people telling us what to do. We don't like people in our homes. Mm -hmm. We um, we are, our independent streak is a mile wide. People often come up to Alaska to strip away distractions and figure out what really matters. And that's what we're doing here too. Because when you look at Alaskan politics through the same lens of Republicans versus Democrats, it seems like there are a lot of contradictions. But party labels can't give you the full picture. When you strip that away and actually talk to people, it's clear that the things that we want are really simple. Jobs that pay well, the freedom to stay homesick, and agency over our lives, especially in the workplace. Alaskans might be fiercely independent, but the people who live here care about each other and their communities. And when policies reflect that, Alaskans will vote for them. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you love Alaska as much as I do. If you have any ideas for stories, either up here or anywhere else in the lower 48, drop a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Vote and eat your vegetables.